If you're looking for free software for your computer, there's a lot to choose from. To separate out the good from the bad, I'll show you nine free programs that you may not know you needed. Let's get to it. First up in this video is Nomax, which is an image viewer that is known for having amazing features that are typically not found in the standard photo viewers on most operating systems. It supports just about every common image format, including RAW. You can even resize and crop your images within Nomax without the need to open image editing software like Photoshop or GIMP. It contains the standard features found in most image viewers, including slideshow, and being able to cycle through your images with the left or right arrow keys on your keyboard. If you want to make any changes to your photos, the editing options can be found in the toolbar at the top by selecting adjustments. Selecting some of these will instantly make changes to your photo, while others will open a pane on the right side where you can make additional changes. Also in adjustments, you have the ability to resize or crop an image. Nomax is available for Windows and the various distros for Linux. CadenLive is a powerful, non-linear video editor that's very user-friendly and easier to use than most of the video editors that you can get. It has multi-track video editing and it supports just about any audio or video format. It also has tons of effects and transitions that can improve the quality of your project. If CadenLive looks similar to Shotcut, another video editor I've shown you in the past, there's a good reason for that. Caden Live is based on the same MLT framework as Shotcut. To get you more familiar with this software, in the user manual section on their site, I'd recommend checking out their quick start guide to get you started. Caden Live is available for all three of the major platforms, Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Next up is Pop Player, which is a multimedia player that is similar to VLC and KM Player. In fact, it was created by the same team that created KM Player. Pop Player supports just about every audio and video format that you can think of. It will also optimize your media for seamless playback. When you first launch Pop Player to play any of your media, you'll notice it has a minimalistic style without a lot of clutter. Along the bottom, it has all the typical playback options. To the far right, selecting the settings icon will bring up the control panel where you can quickly change the audio, video, subtitle, and playback settings. If you want to access even more features, just right click anywhere inside the window to easily get to the settings that you want to change. Pop Player is only available for Windows. Krita is a raster graphics editor that is designed primarily for sketching and painting for digital artists. The software has a ton of features some of those include drawing assistance, layer management, layer masks, and PSD file support. In the resources section, you can also import brush and texture packs from other artists to increase your tool set. When you first open Krita, you'll notice that it has a clean looking user interface that can be customized to fit your needs. In the default view, all the tools are on the left, just like most of the other graphics editing software. On Krita's documentation page, to learn how to use the software, they provide a user manual, tutorials, a getting started guide, along with other resources to help you out. Krita is available for free on all the major platforms. Next up is VirtualBox. Simply, what this program does is that it allows you to install and run other operating systems within a virtual environment on your computer. It's a great way to test out multiple operating systems. When you launch VirtualBox, if you've installed any operating systems, they'll appear here in the left pane. Right now, the only one I have installed is Ubuntu. If you're curious about trying one of the more user-friendly Linux distributions, Ubuntu is one I'd recommend for beginners. Linux Mint is another one that is great for those that are new to Linux. After you've installed an operating system into VirtualBox, to launch it, it's as simple as selecting the operating system from the left pane and then selecting Start. The operating system will go through its process of booting up. 
Eventually, you'll land on the desktop where you can launch and use programs for that operating system. VirtualBox is available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. CPU-Z is system profiling and monitoring software that detects the CPU, RAM, motherboard chipset, along with other hardware features on your computer. It's more in-depth than the tools provided within the Windows operating system. When you open CPU-Z, you'll see your data in a tabbed interface with several categories to choose from, including CPU, caches, mainboard, memory, SPD, and graphics. The data here is raw with no explanation, so it's not for beginners. Here at the bottom, if you select Tools, you can check for driver or BIOS updates, check your clock speeds, and you can save your reports in either TXT or HTML formats. CPU-Z is a great program that can give you a lot of useful information to help you analyze your computer. It's available for Windows and also has a version for Android. Mix is a DJ audio mixing program with a full range of mixing, programming, and effects, which you can use for recordings or live presentations. It has full integration with your songs and playlists from iTunes and supports most of the common music file formats. It contains many of the features you would find in expensive DJ mixing software. Some of those key features include time stretch, beat looping, master sync, along with equalizer and crossfader control. Mix also makes it easy to organize your music library. If you still own CDs, you can load those tunes into your library as well. If you've never used DJ mixing software, when you first open Mix, the user interface can be overwhelming. Thankfully, in their support section, they provide links to their wiki, user manual, and community forums where you can get additional help. Mix is available to download and install on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Now let's take a look at VSDC Free Video Editor, which is full of features often found in expensive editing software. It contains a ton of visual and audio effects, including color correction, object transformation, object filters, special effects, and transition effects. VSDC also allows you to export videos in HD and 4K. Adding files is easy. In the upper ribbon, you could select Add Object and select the file type from the list. I prefer the drag and drop method so with another folder open, just grab your file, whether it be audio, video, an image, or animation, and drag and drop it into the main window. It will then appear in the timeline below. Adding an audio file is just as easy. You can just drag and drop it in, and that will appear on its own layer in the timeline. If you need additional help, you can visit their how-to section, which has more than a couple dozen tutorials, and YouTube is a great resource for full tutorials. While the free version has most of the features that most people will ever need and includes the full video editing suite, they do offer a pro version with additional features that might be beneficial for some, including faster editing with hardware acceleration, enhanced resolution, along with other perks. At this time, VSDC's free video editor is only available for Windows. Real World Cursor Editor provides tools that helps you to create a new mouse cursor or modify an existing one. This is for those of you that have been asking me how I get my cursor highlighted in certain videos. Some of the features include being able to create cursors from images, make multi-resolution cursors, and the ability to make animated cursors. I'll show you quickly how I created the cursor that I am using right now. In the left pane, click on Create. Then double click on New Mouse Cursor. Select, make arrow shape. You can change the arrow head or tail size if you want. Make sure outline color is black and the fill and secondary color is white. Leave the outline width at zero. Select OK. Select the far left drop down arrow and select move. Click and drag the pointer to the center and then let go. Next to the circle, you'll see another drop down arrow Select it, then select Ellipse. In the right pane, you have two options, Circle or Ellipse. Make sure Circle is selected. Back in the toolbar, you'll see three double boxes. Make sure that Paint Under 
is the one that's selected. Back in the right pane, select your color. I think I'll go with green this time. Then select the opacity in the bar to the right. Move your cursor to the main window where it will turn into a crossbar. You can go to any of the four corners. I'll start with the upper right corner and then click and drag to the opposite corner. Then let go. When you're done, select File, then Save. Select your save location and name your file. I'm just going to save mine to my downloads folder and name it green.cur. It must end with .cur. Select OK and close out the program. Whether you're creating a video presentation or you just want a unique cursor for personal use, give Real World Cursor Editor a try. Thanks for watching. Links are in the description. If this video was useful for you, give it a thumbs up and share it with others. If you know of any cool free software that you think should be featured in this series, let me know in the comments. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe and click the bell to not miss out on our latest free software videos and other tech-related stuff.